Well, hello folks and welcome to Homesteader News. Hey, uh, in my last video, I told you guys that I, I promised you that I would show you how I was going to use this 55 gallon plastic drum that I got in order to build a compost tumbler that can also be used as a hand crank washing machine. Well, I got that project done. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And that project is included in my book that's called Simple Solar Homesteading Off the Grid. And I'm going to show you that. This is the book, Simple Solar Homesteading Off the Grid. It's 355 pages, chock full of all kinds of my plans, including how to build a solar cabin and how to build this composting tumbler and washing machine. This book is really, really full of stuff. And I'll just give you an idea here. The descriptions and plans or details are all real nice. So if you want to build this project, uh, this is a great book to have. And this also has all the worksheets in it uh, for installing and designing your own solar system and wind system so I really highly recommend that you get this book because in the next month I'm going to be installing solar and wind on my cabin some additional projects and so if you have this book you'll have the worksheets in front of you and all the directions and designs okay so now I'm going to show you how we build the solar co or the uh, tumbling composter and the hand crank washing machine okay folks this is the uh, composter I made out of a 55 gallon drum. Now the 55 gallon drum, I was just happened to be driving by a car wash and the guy was putting some of these out. I asked him if I could buy one or have one. He said, yeah, go ahead and take one. So the barrel didn't cost me anything. Uh, the framework you can see is all made out of just scrap lumber that I had sitting around my place. I didn't go buy new lumber. I like to recycle materials as much as possible. Uh, if you want to buy new lumber, you're going to need about five two by fours to make the framework. Uh, the 55 gallon drums I said I got for free, but if you're looking around you might be able to find one of these uh, At a yard sale you can buy them new, but they're a little bit pricey So I'd look around see if you can find one used uh, plastic barrels should be used. They'll last a lot longer and uh, As the framework is just made out of some rough lumber. It looks pretty rough right now I will slap a coat of paint on that. I've got some extra paint sitting around in cans that I haven't used uh, But I left it in this condition just so you can see that I use a lot of recycled materials. Now the upright that you can see right there are just two two by fours put together. They're three foot long. The base that it sits on is uh, a three foot piece of two by four and the braces are two foot pieces and the brace, long brace that goes there that holds the two sides together is three foot eight inches long. Now those are about approximations. If your lumber isn't exactly that size, you need to cut it or whatever, uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as the barrel will fit inside the framework, it doesn't really matter too much on sizes or dimensions. And as long as it's high enough up that you can turn it without hitting the ground, you're okay. Uh, the framework's very solid uh, the way this is built because it has uprights on the edges uh, holding up the barrel. All the weight is down through the uprights uh, and then the side rails hold it together. What's nice about this framework is you can just take out a couple of those screws on those long side rails and you can store this whole thing together if you don't want to keep it up all the time. If you just want to build one of these for emergency use uh, or take with you, then you can just take off those side rails and the whole thing will store in a small amount of space. So that's pretty good. Now, <coughs> I have one of these that I use for composting. And I'm going to show you how it works here. What it has, it has a door on the, the front here, which uh, what we use is some cheap hinges. Uh, and all I did is cut out a door, and the door is about, about one foot by one foot. It's not a real large door. You could make it bigger if you want a bigger door. You can also use just a strap hinge, but what I used here is just a couple of uh, regular hinges, uh, what they call cabinet hinges, uh, to go over the back. That holds the door up. And then it also has this little latch, which is just an S-hook latch. And that opens up to open your door up. Now, with the door open like that, then you can put your compost in. And uh, compost can be made of just about uh, anything that was once alive. So you can put your garden scraps in there, you can put your kitchen scraps in there, although we don't recommend you put a lot of red meat or chicken or anything like that in there. Use the stuff that's, that can break down quickly. Meat's not a good product to put in your compost. But you can put uh, leaves, grass clippings, uh, garden waste, uh, just about anything, chicken manure, rabbit manure, dump it all in there, uh, and that'll compost up usually in about two weeks. Now how this works is, as you can see on this end, it's got a handle, and uh, the handle is used for turning the compost. And what we want to do is you want to keep your compost aerated. Uh, most of the microbes and bacteria that break down the compost, 
Uh, they like oxygen. Plus, it also moves the stuff that's on the outside down into the middle where the microbes are busier, and they'll keep this compost a lot better. So you put your stuff in that hole, and then you close that back up. And then when you're ready, you come out every couple of days, and you just give this a turn with these handles here. As you can see, I've got them spaced enough. And you just give this a turn. You don't have to turn it all the way over. Just give it a few rotations. And once that's turned around and around and around a few times, that compost in there, that'll spin up. It'll turn around and it'll, it'll fold back on itself. And that way, the compost will stay nice and aerated. And that's going to speed up the decomposition. And uh, that way, your stuff will come out. Now, you can... Uh, after about two, three weeks, you probably have some pretty decent compost that you can use on your garden. So then you open this back up. Take your compost out of your uh, barrel, put it into a five gallon bucket or whatever, and take that and put it on around your shrubs, around your trees, on your garden or whatever. Now you'll notice that I've added a couple of features in here that I haven't talked about yet. One is you can see that there's a, a hole down in the middle of that barrel there. And what that's used for is for drainage. and. Uh, what you want to get is a plug that looks like this and you can get this at any hardware store and uh, what this is, is it's a sleeve that has a little cap on it and when this is taken apart this sleeve fits down through that hole there we go sleeve fits down through that hole and then that acts as a drain and the cap goes over the top of it and the reason I install one of these is because uh, I want to collect off the moisture which we call compost tea. Compost tea is really high and rich in nutrients and I'll use that compost tea on my house plants and plants that really need a, a good dose of nitrogen so I'll put that in there and all you do with that is you take it put it through the through the barrel from the inside so it'll go through the hole. Okay, Put that through the barrel so it goes through the hole from the inside. I'm showing it backwards here just to show you how it goes. It goes from the inside then uh, if your hole's tight, you probably don't even need to seal around it. But what I do is take maybe a little bit of PVC glue, just go around the edge, glue that to the barrel. Since the barrel's made out of PVC and this is made out of PVC, they're going to lock tight together and glue down. Then that is connected with the cap in this fashion, and that will act as your drain. This is on the bottom side of the barrel. So what I do is after I put my compost in there and it's sat two or three weeks, I'll come out and I'll add maybe a gallon or two of water and uh, let that sit for... 48 hours or so. And then I'll pull this cap off, turn that barrel upside down, and I'll put a bucket underneath that and I'll drain off just the liquid out of the barrel. And that liquid is high in nitrogen. That's called compost tea and I'll put that around my flowers, around my plants, my garden, places like that. So that just goes through the, the end of the barrel. And this has another purpose that I'll show you when we make the washing machine out of this unit. Uh, this will also act as the drain for your washing machine. So you're also going to want, want, want to install one of these if you make the hand crank washing machine. And that just goes down through the inside of the barrel. There you can see it installed through the barrel. Then the cap goes on top of it as such. And that, that seals the barrel up. And that will go down to the bottom of the barrel. Okay. That's pretty much it for the composter. Not complex, easy to build. You could probably build this in an hour or two. I think it took me about two hours using hand tools or power tools. Uh, recycled lumber, if that's all you can find. Now, some people ask me, why do I use recycled lumber? Why don't I go get nicer stuff from my products, projects to show you guys? Well, there's a whole lot of people in this world that don't have much money. And my videos are watched by them, so I want them to know that they can build all these. You can probably find all this stuff at a junkyard if you look around. Uh, about the only thing that you might have to buy, and that's this wood dowel that the composter sits on. And what this is, is a, a piece of hardwood. It's a one-inch hardwood dowel that you could pick up at probably any hardware store. That's the only piece that I had to buy. You could use a piece of pipe if that's all you got available, but the one-inch dowels are really nice. They go in nice and smooth. They won't wear out because they're hardwood. Now you can see how we installed that is just some one inch holes through the tops of the the uh, rail through the upright and it just goes through the barrel and these barrels have a line in the middle of them so it's pretty easy to find the center just by measuring across that line and then dividing it in half okay and the handrail or that the uh, 
hand crank is just a piece of PVC pipe with some screws through the inside of the barrel. I think I put four or five screws through the inside of the barrel. And I had some of these short pieces of PVC just laying around, so I didn't have to buy anything for it. Okay, that works real well so you can turn the tumbler. You don't really need the hand, hand crank if you don't want it. You could just turn it by hand on the top of the barrel. But this gives you something to grab onto if it gets very heavy so you can pull it back up and really move it around. So I like that feature there. You can also use the bung drain holes that uh, the barrels have already installed in them. However, a lot of times those, those will get wore out and they're hard to turn. Uh, and so I suggest the drain plug underneath the bottom of the barrel. Okay, that is the composter, and uh, one of these right here will produce a whole lot of compost in a short amount of time. I also use just a standard compost pile, but I found that one of these tumblers works faster. Uh, it keeps the flies and stuff from being attracted to it because it's sealed up, and uh, is, it won't get all wet in the rain, uh, which can make your compost slow down. So uh, a tumbling composter is a great project. You can build out of scrap materials. You don't really need to buy anything. Uh, you might have to buy a few, couple of hinges if you don't have any. A uh, piece of 10 foot length piece of PVC, PVC pipes only about 10 bucks. Uh, the scrap lumber you can get just about anywhere or you can buy five two by fours. That's all that's necessary for the project. Whole thing for me uh, cost I think three bucks for the hardwood dowel. That's the only thing I bought. Everything else I had sitting around my place. So that's the composting tumbler. Now I'm gonna show you how this can be turned into a hand crank washing machine. Now why would I want a hand crank washing machine? Well, I want you to think about how many times does the power go out if you're living on the grid and could be out for a very long time. You might not be able to uh, run your washing machine. How are you going to wash your clothes? Well, you could wash them in your tub or in your sink, I guess. It's a lot of work, but it can be done. So what I wanted was this uh, hand crank washing machine so that I can wash a large batch of clothes. Now I've used these products called uh, Wonder Washes, which you can buy. They're not cheap, they're about 50 bucks and they only hold four or five t-shirts and maybe a pair of underwear and socks. They don't hold a lot. They do work. Uh, they're nice little units if you're going camping or something like that. But if you've got quite a bit of clothes to wash, one of those are probably not going to work for, a lot, for any type of real major washing. And they're a lot of work. And uh, they still have to, the clothes have to be drained and rinsed and everything like that. So you may have to do 20 loads in order to get much laundry done. So I wanted a hand crank washing machine and where I'm off grid, I didn't really want to run a power washing machine. I can run one off my generator, but I prefer not to use it, especially with the price of gas. So the hand crank washing machine is really nice. Now how this works, you don't want to use your composter for your washing machine. So if you're going to build one, build two of them if you want one for a composter, one for your washing machine. Uh, basically, it's the same exact plans. You build it all the same. The only difference is, is we add some agitators. In a commercial washer, they have an agitator that sits in the middle of the washing machine that rolls back and forth and that scrubs the clothes uh, back and forth against each other so the clothes come really clean. If you don't have an agitator in one of these barrels, because they're smooth, you're not going to get a lot of agitation action. So what I've got is, as you can see on the inside of these barrels, you can see that there's some PVC pipe added. And what I've done is I'm going to put another one in here. Right now I've got two in here, but you can see that there's PVC pipe added on the inside of the barrel. Those are going to be the agitators. There'll be one down in the middle at the bottom there too. Now what happens is as you rotate the barrel, the clothes will roll over those agitators back and forth and that will get the clothes moving a lot better. Those agitators will clean the clothes. Okay, And you use it the same way as you do the composter. You put your clothes in through the top uh, add, and you just want to add enough water just to cover the clothes. You don't need to fill the whole barrel up. Just enough water to cover the clothes. Add in your biodegradable detergent. A liquid detergent would probably be best. Add in your detergent, close up the lid. Okay, you've got it closed up, you've got your clothes in there, you've got your water in there, you've got your cap on your plug in the bottom. Then you just do it just like you would the composter. And all you do is you just start swinging this back and forth. And that's going to agitate the clothes inside that washing machine. And it'll, uh, it'll probably take about 15 minutes. You can have your kids do this for you. It's good exercise. Uh, and it's not very heavy. Now, you don't have to roll the, con the uh, washing machine all the way over. It's not necessary. All you need to do is just go back and forth with this. And that water and those agitators in there are going to slosh those clothes around, get them grinding against each other, and that's going to clean all the dirt out of them. Then after you've done that for about 15 minutes, you're going to pull that plug off the bottom down there that we installed. 
and drain that water. Yeah, you can drain it on the ground, but a better way to use that water is to recycle it. So put a bucket underneath there and uh, just take that water over and put it around your shrubs and your trees and things like that. As long as you're using a biodegradable soap, the soap and the dirt that's in your clothes isn't going to hurt your plants. So you might as well reuse it. So take that water, pour it around your plants, your trees, your shrubs, and places like that. Now that's the washing machine. And all it takes, uh, in addition to the parts for the composter, is just some short pieces of PVC. And uh, you can see that I've got a few of these just sitting around. They're like, I think they're about three feet long. Uh, you want to do them so that they just fit snugly inside the barrel. Okay, they should just go on the inside of the barrel. And then you screw from the outside of the barrel into the PVC. So the screws don't stick forward, you don't want them ripping up your clothes. So you just put those agitators in there. And uh, those will work to scrub the clothes and keep the clothes clean. Now, this project is a washing machine, hand crank washer. Uh, would be very good for an off-grid home that has quite a bit of clothes to wash. Uh, it would also be a good project... Uh, for an emergency washer, even if you don't think you need one right now, but you might want to have one of these, build one of these in case of an emergency. So if your power goes out and you need to wash a large batch of clothes, you could do it. Uh, remember when the power's out, it's also out at the laundromat, so you're probably not going to be able to run your clothes down the laundromat and wash them either. In the cases, places where they've had tornadoes and things like that, people have been without power for over a month uh, sometimes, so you need to be kind of prepared for that. So that would be good for this. This would also be a project for third world countries where they don't have power to run uh, equipment like washing ma machines and things like that. Uh, this project can be built out of scraps. You could probably get all the wood uh, just from uh, a couple of pallets. Uh, break down the pallets for your wood, uh, use a pipe or a dowel for it, and find a plastic barrel. Uh, there's still a lot of people in other countries that wash their clothes by uh, pounding them on rocks in the river. Uh, that's, that's a pretty hard way to wash a, a bunch of clothes. This project here might help somebody uh, living somewhere else so that they could wash their clothes a lot easier than just pounding them on the rocks. Also a great emergency washer or for off-gridders. Okay, folks, that is the... Uh, compost tumbler and the hand crank washing machine. The complete directions are in my book, Simple Solar Homesteading Off the Grid. You can go to my websites, simplesolarhomesteading.com, homesteadernews.com, click on the books. The ebook is only $7 and it is chock full of plans like this. So go, go pick you up a copy of that. Plus when I start doing the solar and wind power, you'll have all of the worksheets and step-by-step -step directions for installing your solar and wind power. So if you have that in advance, it'd be really good for you. Well, I realized I left out a few steps on washing your clothes with the hand crank washing machine. So I better explain so people understand how it works. First, you put your clothes in through the top. Uh, fill the barrel up to just enough water that it covers the clothes. Add in your liquid detergent. Close the lid, then you're going to use the hand crank, moving it back and forth for about 15 minutes is usually all it'll take to wash the clothes. Uh, and this will hold quite a bit. You can put in several pairs of Levi's, all your shirts, socks, underwear, everything like that into one of these big 55 gallon barrels. They'll actually hold more than most commercial washing machines. However, smaller loads do wash a little better, so don't overload it. After you've ran it through the wash cycle, pull the plug that we showed on the bottom of the barrel, let it drain out, or run that into some buckets that you can use onto your plants. Put the cap back on, then you're going to fill it back up to just above the level of the clothes with clean water. You're going to agitate it back and forth several times for another 10-15 minutes. That'll rinse the clothes. That's the rinse cycle. Pull the plug, drain that water, use it on your plants. If the clothes look clean, that's probably all you need. If you want to do two rinse cycles, put the plug back on, add some more water, run it through another rinse cycle, drain it off. Then you're going to take the clothes out of there and hang them on your clothesline. You don't need a dryer for the, uh, if you got sunshine at all. All you got to do is hang your clothes on the clothesline, they'll dry. That's how the, the hand crank washing machine works. Now, you've got a special deal. If anybody wants to build one of these hand crank washing machines, if you'll send me a picture of it or two of you using it, uh, then I will send you a free copy of my book, Off the Grid. That's a pretty good deal. That's a $7 ebook, and I will send that directly to you. You've got to take a picture of your uh, hand crank washing machine built on my designs and uh, tell me how you use it. And just email that to me at homesteadernews at yahoo.com. I'll say that again, homesteadernews at yahoo.com. Send me the picture, your description of how you use the hand crank washing machine, and I will send you a free copy of the ebook off the grid. All right, folks, have a good one.